42 is on use substitutions. So as I was saying, use substitutions is the opposite of the chain rule. So you learn things like the power rule first with derivatives. You learn the power rule for integrals too. So same thing here. So use substitution is going to be kind of like the chain rule. So when you look at something like this, if you have 2x times 1 plus, or the square root of 1 plus x squared, if you were taking a derivative, the chain would it be involved for the 1 plus x squared part, right? So that's going to be what you're going to let u be. So we're going to say let u equal 1 plus x squared. Okay, and then we're going to take the derivative of both sides. So it's going to be kind of like, remember, related rates when you did du over dt, dx over dt, all of that. We just leave off the dt's. Um, so really the way that we write this is we say du equals 1, oops, the derivative of 1 plus x squared, which is 2x and then dx. Okay, so don't worry about the notation too bad. It's basically like we did du over dx equals 2x, and then it's kind of like you multiply that dx over to the other side. So think of them being like units, like you're taking the unit to the other side. All right, so we have that. Now the goal of the u substitution is always to replace every single x with a u. Okay, and when you do that, it should be easy to integrate. So this first part, when you guys see this right here, we've now said that that is the square root of u. Do you guys see? u was 1 plus x squared. And the 2x dx, that also is replaced with something with u. 2x dx was what du was equal to. So we replace all of those different things. And our new, our new um, integration problem is the 2x dx is replaced with a du. And then we have the square root of u. Do we know how to integrate that? Sure do. The other one we did not, though, because we had that 1 plus x squared. We had like it wasn't just like the square root of x, right? Um, so this one we're going to rewrite. We're going to say it's u to the 1 half du, which when we integrate, we get u to the 3 over 2 with a 2 thirds plus c. And then our very last step, very similar to w substitutions in algebra 2, uh, we don't want u's in our answer. We want x's, right? So now we replace. So our u was 1 plus x squared, so we put it back in. And then we're done. So one thing that you can always do with every integration problem is if you're not sure of your answer, you can always check. So some of you guys kind of forgot that on your test. You just went for it. <laughs> and some of them were interesting ones. Um, but for the most part, I thought you guys did very well. So if I was checking this, if I started with 2 thirds times 1 plus x squared to the 3 over 2 plus c, and that was like my y, if I take the derivative, do you guys see how the 2 thirds and the 3 over 2 will go away? You'll get 1 out front, 1 plus x squared to the 1 half times 2x, and then the derivative of the constant is 0. Do you guys see how that's exactly what we had in uh, the original problem? The 2x squared root of 1 plus x squared. Does that make sense? So you can always check if you're not sure, but that's how it's going to work. So this section has lots of confusing boxes where it tells you some different things, but it's saying basically here, if you have the composition of the function, which is kind of what the chain rule was, and you're integrating it, uh, you can change it all into u's, f of u du. So it's looking like f of g of x times g prime of x. A little confusing. The more examples we do, I think the better you will understand this. All right, so number one, so I have x to the fourth, and then I have sine of x to the fifth minus four. What do we think our u is going to be? You're probably right. x to the fifth minus 4. Do you guys see that? Okay, the inside part. So we're going to let u be x to the fifth minus 4. So when I do du, I end up getting 5x to the fourth dx. Okay, and our goal is to replace everything. So, so far we're good because this part is going to be replaced by sine of u. But we still have an x to the fourth and a dx. Do you guys see that in here somewhere, though, x to the fourth dx? What we're going to replace it with, we're going to divide by 5 on both sides. We're going to replace it with 1 fifth du. Can you guys close that door, please? All right, now everything will be replaced with u's. So as I do this, my x to the fourth dx, that was replaced with 1 fifth 
and a du. I always put the du on the end. And then my sine of x to the fifth minus 4, that's replaced by sine of u. Okay, notice how I pulled that 1 fifth out to the front. It could be inside the integration sign if you want it to be. Um, but usually I just pull constant multiples out with numbers that I've multiplied by. Do you know how to integrate that? How do you integrate sine? Negative cosine, right? A lot of people have been saying cosine. So negative cosine. So you're going to get negative 1 fifth cosine of u plus c. So our final answer is negative 1 fifth cosine of x to the fifth minus 4 plus c. That's it. Okay, so a few more. So for this, I have u is equal to 4x minus 5. du ends up being 4 dx. There's no 4, right, with the dx out in our problem. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Like this part is our square root of u, but then we have a dx, but we don't have the 4 as well. So I'm going to divide the 4 over and say it's 1 fourth du equals dx, and then I'm ready to replace everything. <coughs> so I'm going to have the square, or the, the square root of, the uh, integral square root of u, and then dx is replaced by 1 fourth du. See how it works. And we integrate. So if I'm integrating, I get u to the 3 over 2 with a 2 thirds out front. I still have that 1 fourth from before plus c. So I get 2 over 12, which is 1 sixth, my u to the 3 over 2 plus c. So I didn't write my u there. I just left kind of a parenthesis. Remember, u is the 4x minus 5. So that would be our final answer. Okay. Making sense so far? Yeah. It's really not that bad. There are going to be tricky ones later. You know there will be. But so far, so good. All right. So same thing here. Are you guys pretty good at guessing what the u is? 1 minus 3x squared. It's usually the inside part, just like the chain rule. So du then would be negative 6x dx. So in my problem, I just have an x dx. Okay, so I want it, I want to only have that x dx. So I'm going to do negative 1 sixth du is going to replace the x dx. So I'm going to get a negative 1 sixth and a du from the x dx. And I still have that square root part on the bottom. So I have square root of u down there. which we know how to integrate. So I'm going to have a negative 1 sixth. That's really u to the negative 1 half. So when I integrate it, I'm going to get u to the positive 1 half, right? Add 1 to the power, and then a 1 over 1 half out front. So the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So I get negative um, 1 third whatever my u is to the 1 half plus c. So my u was 1 minus 3x squared. And that's your answer. So you could have it raise the 1 half or you can put it under a square root, it doesn't matter. Still feeling good about this? All right, so sine of 4x dx. All right, this one, eventually you guys will not need to do a u substitution. If you kind of think about it, if you're like, okay, what do I take the derivative of to get a sine of 4x? Okay, think about it. You would need some form of cosine. Would it be positive cosine or negative cosine? Uh, if you're going to take the derivative and get positive sine, so negative cosine. So you'd need the negative cosine of 4x. But then when you take the derivative, you have a times 4. So what do you think when we integrate, what's going to happen? You're going to need a 1 fourth, yeah. So a lot of you are going to be really good at doing this without a u substitution, but let me show you why it works with the u substitution here. So for this one, what we're going to make our u is just the 4x. Because then du is going to be 4dx. 
So 1 fourth du is just going to be dx. So we replace. So I'm going to have a 1 fourth, and then I'm going to have sine of u, and dx was replaced by that 1 fourth du. So I have the 1 fourth already, so du. So when you integrate sine of u, that's when you get the negative cosine of u, right? The derivative of sine is cosine, so the integral is negative cosine. So I get negative 1 fourth cosine of u plus c. So negative 1 fourth cosine of 4x plus c is our answer, which is exactly what we said it was going to be, right? Fox season. Okay. So what if we have numbers? So all of these were what we call um, indefinite integrals, right? There were no numbers, no limits of integration on there. Okay, but what if we do have numbers? So this is going to be a little bit different. And there's two ways that you can do this. I prefer one of the methods. I'll let you guys choose what, what method you prefer. Um, so in order to do this, we can do two different things. So the first thing, we can change our integral into u and du. And then we can change it back to x's and then plug in those x values that you have. Or the second way is you can change everything into u and du and change your numbers, your limits of integration. So if it went from like 1 to 4, you can change those numbers 1 to 4 into u values and keep everything in terms of u. Okay, so I'm going to show you this example and I think it will make more sense. Okay, so method number one. And method number one I think takes a little bit more space. All right, so method number one. You're going to think about the, the uh, indefinite integral. So with no numbers, like that, and we're going to say, let u be the 2x plus 1, so then du is going to be 2dx. So I'm going to have a 1 half du is equal to dx. So when you replace, you're going to have a 1 half out front, maybe give myself some room, and then I'm going to have the square root of u and a du. Okay, and we know how to integrate that. That's u to the 1 half, right? So when I integrate, I get u to the 3 over 2 with a 2 thirds, but I still have that 1 half from before. And then I'd have a plus c. So I get 2 sixths, which is 1 third, u to the 3 over 2 plus c. And that would be the indefinite integral. So I'm replacing the u with 2x plus 1. Do you guys understand that? So that's our indefinite integral. But we haven't done anything with those numbers. Okay, so if I'm doing the numbers, then I say, okay, well, if I have the integral of, from 0 to 4 of the square root of 2x plus 1 dx, that's really going to be, I did my integration steps, I got 1 third 2x plus 1 to the 3 over 2. You don't need to worry about the plus c because it will go away. And we go from 0 to 4. Right, so you did all the integration steps before, now we're put, putting in the numbers. So now when I plug in 4, I'm going to have a 1 third. Think about what it is when you plug in a 4. You're going to have 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1, so 9 to the 3 over 2. And then minus a 1 third. When I plug in 0, I have 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1 to the 3 over 2. So you can pull the 1 third out to the front if you want to. You can just do 9 to the 3 over 2 minus 1 to the 3 over 2. What is 9 to the 3 over 2? 27, right? 9 under square root is 3 squared, or not squared, cubed is 27. So we have 27, and then we have minus 1. So we get 26, and we still have that 1 third. So let me pull the 1 third out, and then we'll say 27 minus 1. So we get 26 over 3 is our answer. Or you could do the 1 third with it, and you could just have what is it, 9 minus 1 third, which is the same as 26 over 3. All right, so that's method one. Obviously, it's a little bit more time consuming than the ones we just did because we have to plug in numbers. Okay, here's method number two. So method number two is keep the numbers on there the whole time, so never make it an indefinite integral. You still do your u substitution, so you say u is equal to 2x plus 1, du equals 2dx, just like we did before. 1 half du is equal to dx. But you do an additional step here. Because these numbers right here, 
these zeros and fours, these were x values. Okay, but instead of going with x, so see how I did the whole integration for method one? I, I made everything in terms of u, I switched it back to x, and then I plugged in those x values. We're not going to do that with method number two. We're going to take x values and we're going to switch them into u values. Just like when I asked you guys, like in algebra two, what is f of one? You guys could find f of one, right? It was like a function. These, this is a function u of u is equal to 2x plus 1. So if I ask you what u of 0 and u of 4 are, you should be able to do it. What's u of 0? So we're plugging into here. If I plug in x equals 0, I get 2 times 0 plus 1. Right, I get 1. That's the u value that's associated with that certain x value. All right, and if I have an x value of 4, what's u then? 9. Do you guys see how it works? So when I do my integration, my x value of 0 gave me a u value of 9. My x value of 4 gave me a u value of 9. Oh, what did I say? <laughs> my x value of 0 gave me a u value of 1. My x value of 4 gave me a u value of 9. So these are now u's. Does that make sense? We change them to u's. And we never go back. We keep them as u's the whole time. All right, and then I have my square root of u, I have my du, and I have my one half. So everything is in terms of u's. Now we integrate. So when we integrate, we get, still have my one half, I get u to the three over two with the two thirds, and I plug in my one and my nine. So I have a one third u to the uh, 3 over 2, so I'm going to have 9 to the 3 over 2 minus 1 third 1 to the 3 over 2. And do you guys see where that's exactly the same as what we just had? Oops, I ran out of room there. It's like barely an edge there that you can't see. Let me write it a little bit nicer over here. Do you guys see how that's the same as what was over here? So we're at the same point. So then we can say that our answer is 26 over 3. So does it matter which one you guys use? Which one do you like better? I mean, I know I have a preference, but I like the second one. It was just less writing, right? So I personally like the second way. So just remember, once you change it into use, keep it as use the entire problem. OK? All right, so let's go ahead and try this one. Do you guys want a second to try it on your own? Yeah? Okay. All right, so for this one you should have had u is the 1 minus 4x and du is going to be negative 4dx. And you should also find those u values. So you need to find u of 1 and u of 4. So if you find u of 1, plug in 1, you get 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And then plug in 4, you get 1 minus 16 is negative 15. So Jenny asked a good question. She said, do you do, like, even though the 1 is replaced by a negative 3 and the 4 is replaced by a negative 15, that's kind of like bad notation with integrals, right? Because it's saying, like, the big number going to the, like, it's doing the wrong order. You can leave it like that. It's not a big deal. You could flip it and make it negative if, you, if it really, really bothers you. But just leave it like that, and it will all work out in the end. OK? So we're going to have the dx is replaced by negative 1 fourth du. So I'm going to have negative 1 fourth out front and a du. And then I have 1 over u squared. OK, now I had something similar on your test. A lot of, a lot of you guys had trouble with this, not the u substitution thing. You didn't have u substitutions. But I had u to the negative 2. OK, so some of you guys are still having trouble um, integrating that because you're thinking of like adding 1 to 2 and getting 3. OK, but you're adding 1 to negative 2. OK, so be very, very careful with negatives. So when I integrate, you actually get u to the negative 1 with a negative 1 out front. And we still have that negative 1 fourth, and it goes from negative 3 to negative 15. Lots of negatives. So just keep track of all those negatives. Hopefully you guys did. 
So we get negative 1 fourth times negative 1, so I'm going to have a 1 fourth, and I'm going to have a 1 over u. And I'm going from negative 3 to negative 15. So you can pull a 1 fourth out, because both of them will have that 1 fourth if you want to do that. Or you could just go with it and have 1 fourth over, and, or times 1 over negative 15. And then do minus a 1 fourth times 1 over negative 3 and get your answer. So what do we have? Negative 1 over 60 plus 1 over 12. So that's going to be 5 over 60 minus 1 over 60, so 4 over 60, which reduces down to 1 over 15. So how many of you guys got that, 1 over 15? Yeah, good, nice. I wrote mine very sloppy. I was very excited to get that answer. Um, 1 over 15. All right, good. Okay, so you guys think you can handle that with plugging the numbers in. I don't have a ton on your homework where you plug the numbers in. I feel like it's just like an extra step. <laughs> like I think you guys know how to do it. It's just I do a lot that are just basic indefinite integrals. All right, so I told you that, of course, it's going to get harder. So it says sometimes finding what to make your U can be tricky. And this is like really frustrating for high school students, okay, because sometimes you're trying a problem and you're like, oh, it has to be this U, and then it's not. <laughs> so sometimes you kind of have to play around with it and try multiple things for you. All right, so on this one, when you see sine squared of 3x times cosine of 3x, okay, what do you think u should be? Most of you guys will say 3x, right? But if you make, and I, I can show you, don't write this down, but if I make u 3x, du is 3dx, so I get a one-third du. So it's like you're starting this problem, and you have the one-third, but then you have sine squared of u, cosine of u du. And I don't know how to integrate that. How do you do that one? You could do it again, a second u substitution, but there's an easier way. All right, so we're not going to make it 3x. So what do we think? Think what else is in parentheses. Sine, right? Sine of 3x. So we're not going to make it the whole sine squared. We're just going to make it sine of 3x. So if u is sine of 3x, then du then is going to be the cosine of 3x times 3 and then the dx, which is good for us because we have cosine of 3x dx, right? So it's here. So we'll just take, get rid of that one-third, or the 3, make it, make it a one-third on the other side. So this blue part's going to be replaced by that one-third du. And what about the red part? Is that going to be replaced with u's? Yeah, that's just going to be u squared. Do you guys see it? Okay, so our integral is now going to be one-third the integral of u squared du. And we know how to integrate that. So like I said, sometimes you kind of have to play around with it and try different things. So I'm going to get a one-third. I'm going to have u to the one-third, and I gain another one. Oh, wait, dang it, I did that earlier, too. u to the three, and I gain another one-third out front. Plus c. So I get a one-ninth, whatever u was to the three, plus c. And your u was that sine of 3x. So you can make it sine cubed of 3x, or you can just use sine of 3x and times c cubed. That's fine. Make sense? All right, number two. So oftentimes your goal is when you take the derivative, the du part, it will replace the rest of that integral. Does it make sense? So like with this, if I make my u, not the square root, hang on. If I make my u uh, 2x minus 1, when I, de when, I, when I do du, I just have 2. So you guys see how that's a little bit weird here because I have 2 dx. I don't have this x. Do you guys get it? So you have a square root of u, but you still have an x. That's bad. We never still want to have an x. OK, but your intuition is right. That is your u. That's what you should make u. OK, it's almost always, if there's a square root, it's almost always what's under that square root. OK, so the problem is this part becomes the square root of u. The dx can be replaced by 1 half du, right?
but then we still have this x. What do I do with this? Okay, any ideas? Yeah, like look at this equation here. Okay, if u is equal to 2x minus 1, what is x equal to? So we're solving for x. Yeah, we're going to add the 1 over. So we're going to have u plus 1. And then all over 2, right? So this integral now becomes u plus 1 over 2. That was replaced by the x, right? Square root of u and a 1 half du. You can put the 1 half out front if it bothers you. Which you can actually integrate. It's messy, but you can integrate it. So let's pull something out. So we're going to pull out the constant multiple, something that we're multiplying by. Did you guys see how the denominator is 2 times 2? We could pull that out. So 2 times 2 makes 4. So I'm going to have a 1 fourth out front. And then I'm going to have u plus 1 times the square root of u, so times u to the 1 half. And a lot of people think that you can just take the integral of both pieces, like the integral of u plus 1 and the integral of u to the 1 half. You can't do that. Just like with product rule, you couldn't just take the derivative of both pieces, right? So you can't just integrate both pieces either. All right, so we're going to go ahead and distribute this in. So I'm going to have a 1 fourth, and I'm going to have u to the 3 over 2 plus u to the 1 half du. So when I integrate, I get 1 fourth, and I'm going to have my u to the 5 over 2 with a 2 fifths out front, plus u to the 3 over 2 with a 2 thirds out front. And then just tack out a plus c at the end. Okay, I'm going to do two steps in one. You ready for it? Let's distribute the 1 fourth in, and then let's replace the u's. Did you get it? Okay. So we're going to get, we have 1 fourth times 2 fifths, so that's going to be 2 over 20, which is 1 over 10. So I'm going to have 1 over 10, and then I'm going to have the u, which was 2x minus 1, to the 5 over 2. Then I'm going to have plus 1 fourth times 2 thirds, so 2 over 12, which is 1 sixth. The u is 2x minus 1, to the 3 over 2, and then plus c on the end. And that is our answer. It's hard, isn't it? Those ones where you have to like solve for solve for x, they can be a little bit tricky. All right, number three. So I have one third secant square root of eight x dx. This one you can make it as hard as you want. It can be very easy on what your u is though. What's u? What do you guys think? Well, yeah. So he's noticing that if you take the deri the derivative of tangent, you get secant squared, right? So it's okay that we have secant squared in there. So what is u, though? Yeah, it's just 8x. That's it. Okay, so when we do du, we get 8dx, or 1 8 du equals dx. Because as I'm replacing, I'm going to pull that 1 third out, and I'm going to pull the 1 8 out. Oops, du. So I'm replacing the dx with um, 1 eighth du. And then my secant squared of 8x is going to now be secant squared of u. So Alex just said, well, we know that we know the derivative of something gives us secant squared. The derivative of tangent is what gives us secant squared. You all remember that, right? Do I need to do a derivative drill, maybe? Some people forgot the secant x tangent x thing on their, on their test. It hurt my heart. <laughs> so I was going to print one for today. I totally forgot. So I have 1 over 24. And then I'm going to do the antiderivative of secant squared has to be that tangent of u. So we get 1 over 24 tangent of 8x <coughs> plus c. And if you aren't sure, take the derivative, right? You'd have 1 over 24 secant squared of 8x times 8. So the 8 and the 1 over 24 make that 1 third. 
All right, so number four is also one where you have to solve for an x. So go ahead and what do you guys think the u is? Because your intuition is usually good. x minus 2, the part under the square root. And then go ahead and try that one. All right, so on this one, um, you let your x or your u be the x minus 2. So then your du ends up just being dx. So as you're replacing this part right here, the square root of x minus 2 becomes our square root of u. And then dx is replaced by du. But you still have an x plus 2. OK, so it's one where you have to solve for the x. So if you go here and you say, well, x is really going to be u plus 2, then when you replace, you're going to have x is replaced by u plus 2. So you have u plus 2 plus another 2, right? And then the square root of u du. Did you guys get that? So you're going to have u plus 4, and you're multiplying the u to the 1 half in. So you're going to get u to the 3 over 2 plus 4 u to the 1 half du. Alex, Peter. So you get u to the 5 over 2 with the 2 fifths plus u to the 3 over 2 with a 2 thirds, but you're also going to have a 4. So 4 times 2 thirds is going to be 8 thirds plus c. So your final answer should be 2 fifths. u is x minus 2, so to the 5 over 2, plus 8 over 3, x minus 2 to the 3 over 2 plus c. Okay, did you guys get that? Yeah? All right. So u substitutions can be tricky. There's lots of different problems. Um, sometimes it is hard to figure out what your u can be. With things with secant and tangent, actually, um, maybe sometimes there's like a secant tangent as a derivative, so you make that, that's kind of like the du part. Secant and tangent can go either way a lot of times. All right, so same idea on these ones. Um, they're a little bit different, so we'll go ahead and do them. So u, I have x squared plus 4x minus 3. du ends up being 2x plus 4. I'm going to put in parentheses dx. So how is that different? I have x plus 2 over here. What can I do to get the x plus 2? So you can see you just divide by 2 on both sides. So I would have 1 half du equals x plus 2 dx. So that gives me the part that I want, the x plus 2 dx. OK, so when I integrate, I'm going to have a, my 1 half. I'm going to have the square root of u and a du. So we get u to the 3 over 2. We have a 2 thirds and a 1 half. So I'm going to have a 1 third, my u to the 3 over 2, plus c. Yep, and that's your answer. All right, same idea for this one. Again, u is almost always that part under the square root, right? So I'm going to have x minus 4. Okay, so I'm going to have, when I replace, I definitely have the square root of u on the bottom. And my du replaces the dx. But notice I still have that x squared. So we need to know what we do with that. Okay, so it's one of those where you're going to solve. So you're going to solve for the x. And you're going to have u plus 4 is equal to x. So you're replacing the x with u plus 4. So it's x squared, so it's going to be u plus 4 squared. OK, so if you had something really uh, terrible, like u plus 4 to the 10th, you would not want to foil it out. It would take forever. OK, there'd probably be some kind of other way that you can solve this. Um, but in this case, you're going to go ahead and foil it out. OK, so we're going to foil out the u plus 4. So I'm going to get u squared plus 8u plus 16. And I'm dividing that u to the 1 half into it. OK, so I had a question an integration problem similar to this on your test. Um, and a lot of you guys, most of you guys got it, but a lot of you guys forgot to bring the u to the 1 half into all the pieces. So it goes in here, here, and here. OK, some of you guys just kind of integrated the top and integrated the bottom, which is, that would be like the opposite of the quotient rule. We, you wouldn't be doing that right, right? You can't just take the derivative of a top and a derivative of the bottom. All right, so we get a u to the 3 over 2 plus 8 u to the 1 half 
plus 16u to the negative 1 half. So all I did is I divided by the u to the 1 half by subtracting my powers. So when I integrate, I get my u to the 5 over 2 with the 2 fifths. I get a u to the 3 over 2 with a 2 thirds. So 2 thirds times 8 is going to be 16 thirds. Then I get a u to the 1 half, and I gain a 2. 2 times 16 is 32. Don't you hate when there's lots of u's and you have to, you have to write that last step? Some people are asking in the other class if they can be lazy and not write it. But no, you should always, if you start with x's, you should have x's in the end. So we're going to have x minus 4 to the 5 over 2, 16 thirds, x minus 4 to the 3 over 2, plus 32, x minus 4 to the 1 half, plus c. That is our answer. Crazy, huh? All right, so a couple last things to notice. if we have symmetric functions. So if you think about the graphs of things that involve symmetry, so maybe it's symmetric across the y-axis or the origin or something like that, um, even in odd functions. You guys had one similar to this on your test, actually, where we talked about there was something that involved an even function or an odd function. Um, I won't say it in case some of you guys still need to take your test. Um, but anyway, so if you have the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx, okay, and it's an even function. Think of the most basic even function. We'll think of y equals x squared. If I go from negative a to a, I get two areas that are both on the positive side of the x-axis, and they're identical, right? So what we do instead is we write it as 2 of the integral from 0, it's a weird 0, 0 to a of f of x dx. And that may not seem like it's simplifying it very much, but it actually does. So think about all those times when I tell you not to use math 9. When you guys had 0 as one of your limits of integration, weren't you guys all like, woo, I have 0, because a lot of it would go away, right? That's nice when we have 0 as a limit of integration. So it makes it a lot easier, actually. And then if f is odd, so think of a basic odd function, like x cubed. If I go from negative a to a, you get the same areas, but one is positive and one is negative. So what do we think this answer would be? Zero. Yeah, it's going to be zero. Okay, so these types of questions are kind of scattered about the um, AP test all the time. Um, so you might see something, so it says likewise a function is said to be even if it's symmetric about the um, y-axis and odd if it's symmetric about the origin. In other words, that's 180 degree rotation. Okay, so if I see something like that, and I see my limits of integration are negative 3 to 3, okay, I immediately say, is this an odd or even function? And maybe it's not. Maybe it's a mixture of odds and even powers. Okay, but in this case, these are all even powers. See how you have x to the fourth, x squared, and then you have a number. That number, 2, is really the same as 2x to the 0, right? They're all even powers. So this is what we would call an even function. So really, this whole integral is going to be 2 times 0 to 3 of x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 2 dx. And that would be easier to do by hand. It's still kind of gross. <laughs> At one point, you have like 243 over 5 as part of it. So I'll skip it. <laughs> but it's a lot better than plugging in 3 and also plugging in negative 3. All right, so this next one. Again, notice that you have negative 5 to 5. Is this an odd function or an even function? Yeah, this whole answer should be zero. It's, it's going to be an odd function, right? Because it's x to the 3 and x to the 1. They all have odd powers. Okay, so this whole integral will end up being zero. Okay, now the types of ones, I should have put one like this. The type that uh, the AP test does all the time in the multiple choice, it will be something like x cubed sine of x, like something weird. But you see that x cubed is odd, and you know that sine of x is also odd. Maybe you didn't know that. But if you have an odd times an odd, it will end up being odd. OK? Um, and this would, if you go from like negative pi over 4 to pi over 4, let's say, this whole answer then would be 0. OK, so you can know it right away. If you like those quick questions on the AP test. All right, so the last thing that I'm asking is, are sine, cosine, or tangent, are they odd or even? 
Okay, so let's think about it. Sine. If you draw y equals sine of x, it looks like this, right? And we want to decide if it's odd or even. So if you actually take, let me see if I can do this with this. If I take this and I flip it around, do you guys see it? Do you notice you get exactly the same thing? That's what an odd function does. If you rotate it around 180 degrees, you get exactly the same thing. So that one's good. All right, and if I have cosine of x, okay, cosine ends up looking like this. That's what we call an even function. Okay, it's symmetric across the line y equal, or the, the y axis. And then the last one is tangent. Do you guys remember what tangent looks like? Yeah, it kind of looks like x cubed, and it's centered on the origin. It has uh, vertical asymptotes at pi over 2, negative pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. All right. And this one, what do we think? It is odd. Yep, if you rotate it around, exactly the same thing. Isn't that fun that you're not supposed to do that? Oh, wait, you can. You can just move your notebook around. <laughs> exactly the same thing. All right, so tangent is basically like an odd. It's sine over cosine. Whenever you have an odd divided by an even, it ends up being odd. So, fun fact. All right.